Hey pen people. Today we're going to be doing a restoration, or not really a restoration, but at least a repair on this Parker Vacumatic. This is the Silver Pearl version. Um, these are great pens. Uh, they're made out of great materials and they're good writers. Um, but they have a what we call a vacuumatic or what is called a vacuumatic um, filling system where uh, the way these work is they've got this plunger on the end. You put it down in the ink and you pump this you know, five or six times and it will fill the barrel full of ink. And originally these had um, clear-ish barrels where there were lines of silver, the silver pearl, um, celluloid and lines of clear, but over time they amber and they become a bit darker. And you, you're you're probably seeing flashes of that that amber color there. And looking through it um, with a flashlight, you can see a little bit better of what's going on. You can see the sorry glare there. It's kind of hard to, but anyway, you can see that it's clear through there, but with you know a, quite a bit of ambering. So this is not a, a museum quality pen by any means. Um, it's got this chrome finish um, on the trim that's spotty in places where some of it's chipping off and such. Um, there are some scratches to the barrel. Uh, anyway, so this is going to be kind of a user pen. Um, the nib is in decent shape. It's not bent or broken or anything like that. The feed looks okay. I have cleaned it a little bit, um, but the hard part about these is changing out the diaphragm in the back here. Now, caveat i i'm doing this for me i don't do this professionally i am in by no means a professional pen restorer or anything like that i have a few tools and i'm not afraid to work on my own pens um but if you attempt to do this on your own the chances are you'll break at least one pen while you're doing it um these old pens are not necessarily uh the best um in the best shape at, at all times um the materials can become brittle over time and they can break and you're going to be using heat to make some of these uh, repairs possible. So let's kind of get into it. Uh, again, and this is the way I do it. I don't have all of the tools that a professional pen repairer does. And so I do some things that they will probably consider sketchy. Um, but they are how I know how to do it. And anyway, here we go. So this is the blind cap, this is the cap, obviously, and what you need to do is you need to be able to remove the section and you need to be able to re remove the uh, vacuumatic uh, filler, filler. And the way you do that is using a, a judicious amount of heat. And by that, um, I mean you've got to be able to warm up this area and this area on the barrel so that the shellac that holds these threaded portions in will soften enough that you can unscrew them. They'll still have some friction and some grab as you're trying to get them out. So it will take the use also of some things like uh, these little r rubber gripper sections here. Um, I, I don't remember where I got this one, but this one works really well. Um, it's just like a piece of wide, thick rubber band. Uh, inside of it, it, there's a there's a texture that helps you grip even better. Um, and then what that you know with this, you can put it uh, here, for example, and grab really well onto the barrel so it doesn't slide between your fingers. Um, I have a before I had this, I made one out of an old uh, bicycle inner tube, and it works okay too. Um, it's just a chunk of inner tube. Um, it's better than nothing. It's not as good as this is, um, but it still it still does you you know does an okay job. Um, there's an old uh, Parker made one here that's more I think for grabbing uh, nibs uh, and and pulling th this portion out. Um, but anyway, there are lots of different options out there and just something to give you some better traction on the barrel when you're trying to unscrew things because these will be firmly stuck. Um, what I do when I do this, um, and I know, you know, people are going to cringe, they're going to go crazy about it, but I honestly use a candle. Um, you can, the, the old pen restorers used to use alcohol lamps, which is essentially the same thing with a small flame. And what I do with it is that I hold it about five or six inches above the flame. So it's just the heat, not the flame itself that is reaching the, the pen. You don't ever want to get close to a flame with these. The celluloid will burn instantly. I mean, it's just... It's very flammable stuff. It will it will damage it and hurt it in ways that you don't want to have happen. But if you hold it away from the flame quite a ways, 
Um, what I do is I keep my fingers without gloves on because you want to be able to feel the heat. I will hold it like this, and then I will rotate it while it's above the flame so that only the heat is reaching this portion right here. And if my fingers can't take the heat, then I shouldn't have it that close. I need to back off. And I want it to get nice and, and warm through here, and it's going to take three or four, maybe five or six times. I, I call it heat soaking because what you're doing is you're kind of you're letting the heat soak its way in through the materials to get into where the shellac is, and you've got to do it a few times, and it'll you know maybe 15 seconds, 20 seconds at a time, heating it up and let it you know, and then and then testing to see if it's loosening up, heating it up again, testing to see if it's loosening up. And little by little, you know, you eventually, set, you know, and like I say, for me, for some reason, number four is the magical time. Um, it's not always that way, but it, I've never had them come apart under four time after four uh, sessions getting warmed up. So anyway, you warm it up and warm it up, warm it up. And then using your little grippers, you can grab it here. And then grab it here like this, and then you want you want to hold it as close as as possible to the section as you turn it, and then it will break loose. And this one's ah, oh, there it goes. And I've already done it once before, but the shellac is still on there. It's really hard to remove the shellac, but anyway, it's it's there, and it's still giving me a little bit of of a difficulty coming apart. Um, and. You can unscrew the sections on these. Lots of pens, uh, vintage pens, do not have threaded barrels. The The section is just friction fit in there, which to me is even more dangerous because to get them loose, you're tempted to torque them from side to side to help break them loose, and then that's where the barrel cracks. Um, these threaded ones can be a bit stuck a bit harder, but if you get them warm enough and let them soak in, the, you know, the, the heat soak in, by doing, you know, heating passes, you know, different passes, heating it up, it will get, give. But when you're done, you're going to have something like this, and you can still see there's shellac on those threads there, and they'll still grip. When you you saw that, that's what happened when I screwed that back in there. And, and I'm sorry that you're not getting this kind of real time as I actually take it apart. Uh, the reason for that is I actually filmed this once, and then the the file got corrupted, so I'm doing it over again. Anyway. Um, you have to do the same thing with the the feed the, uh, the 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 filler mechanism down here. Again, I will hold it like this over the flame, rotate it while it's warming. If my fingers get too hot, then it's too hot for the barrel, and then I do that five you know four five six times, get it nice and warm in there, and then and then you have to have a tool. Uh, this one is uh, from Pen Tooling. It's their number D seven tool. The way this one works is is that you thread that filler unit into there and then you tighten down this clamp and that grips it so that when you twist this the whole filler unit and everything doesn't twist with it so you're you so after you've warmed it up a few times you can use your your gripper rubber up on there and then you twist it and it will give now it's not going to do it the first time. It might not even do it the 10th time, but you just have to be patient. Be very, very, very patient with these pens. Now, we're getting at the point where I stopped the video the last time. Okay, so once you get this filler unit out, um, after using one of these pen block things, it will come out, and actually, it, it, it actually won't the first time. It'll be stuck like this. And I don't like to yank on this because what you can do is you can break this uh, this plunger off of the end of it and, and break the filler unit. So you don't want to do that. Once you have it unscrewed like this and it's stuck in there, you need to use something and come down through the barrel and push it out. Now, I would prefer to use a piece of wood. I don't have a wooden dowel that's thin enough for this. Well, actually, this one does... What? It does fit. Never mind. Use a wooden dowel or something like that that won't scratch the inside of the pen and then push. And you'll feel it come loose at the bottom there. And then you can pull it the rest of the way out. Now, this is the filler unit. Um, it's it's uh, five different pieces here. You've got this the, the rod here. The rod is is uh, glued onto this ebonite piece at the end here, which uh, is the it retains the little pellet inside of the diaphragm. 
um, and then there's a spring here, and then there's the, the that flange. Um, but you've got to get the rest of the diaphragm out. This one is mostly intact, if it will come out. Come on. It is stuck in there. One of the other tools that you'll probably want to invest in if you're going to be doing some pen repairs is a nice pair of alligator pliers like this. These were not very expensive on on Amazon. I didn't pay much for them at all. Um, and then you can, you can reach inside pens and pull out old sacks and diaphragms and things like that. And there we go. So this diaphragm is mostly intact. Um, you can see why it failed because it tore right there. It was tearing off. So it was no longer doing its job as a filler um, because it tore. Uh, it's really pliable. It makes me wonder if this was a, a botched repair. I'm not sure. No way to know. Oh, I don't know. There's some debris here, so maybe it was just age. Anyway, now the barrel needs to be cleaned out, and you need to assess how it's doing right in here. You don't want there to be leftover bits of diaphragm or shellac or anything in there when you put the new one in. So uh, let me pa pa pause and then come back after I've got, cleaned this out. I clean these out with uh, with uh, cool water, not never use hot water, and I like to use uh, these soft-ish uh, brushes uh, with a little bit of soap and then clean these out really well. Um, they tend to always have some ink residue in here and that will, will, will help occ uh, occlude the barrel. Um, I actually rinsed this one out after I pulled the section out first, and so there's not as much in there, but I still need to clean out this this bit in the back here where the uh, the diaphragm was because uh, there's always going to be ink residue right in there. So let me let me go clean this out, and I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Um, this has been cleaned out. And some of the, um, the the clarity of the barrel has been improved there. You can see that it's very amber, but you can see through it somewhat. Um, there's a little transition line there. I don't know if you can see it. It's right there. Um, there's a there's different uh, barrel uh, thicknesses. It's uh, so the barrel is thicker through here than it is back here where the diaphragm goes. Um, so it gives it room for the diaphragm to move in and out without binding against the side of the barrel wall. Um, so let's get a new diaphragm. I got my diaphragms from uh, Anderson Pens. You can get them from Pen Tooling as well and other places. Um, oh, I'm, I'm almost getting ahead of myself here. Let me get the new diaphragm out though. Um, but one of the most difficult things about this is <clears throat> the diaphragm is held in this ebonite cup here and inside the diaphragm and if you if you buy one of these you can feel it when you squeeze there there's a hard plastic pellet that's stuck in the end of the diaphragm there the way this works is is that this tool with the little cup hollow at the mouth doesn't want to focus on that there's a, a cup-shaped hollow at the end of this rod. Um, you will use this, insert it inside the diaphragm. You'll push it up against the, the pellet, and, the, and then you'll jam it into there, and then it'll, it'll stay in there, and that's how it works. The problem is, is that when you pull the old one out, the old dead one out, is the pellet will stay inside that cup there. Now, there's quite a few ways uh, of doing this i've seen you know i've heard of people using drills special tools i don't know um i've done four or five of these now and i have a very um unorthodox way of getting them out i think um i use a needle yes a sewing needle um i've got it jammed into this you know pencil eraser and what i do with it is i jam it into the pellet as hard as i can and then pry up on it until it pops out of that cup. It can, it'll take me a little while to get it done, um, but it does work for me, And um, but it does take a little bit of time. And one of the things that's been useful, I have found, is that a lot of the pellets, and I think they're the original pellets from, um, from Parker, um, were kind of a split pellet where it was made out of two separate pieces that actually, uh, yeah, I do have them in here. I don't know why I save things. I'm kind of weird that way. Um, so 
the pellets that come with in the diaphragms are round, just little round little plastic pellets like this one here. Um, I, I wish I could make it focus, but it doesn't want to. Um, and the plastic pellet, it, it, it's got like a, 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 a casting or, or line around it so that when you force the needle into it, sometimes it'll just split in half. And that's what's happened with this one. This was a round pellet. Um, the needle went in between the, the, the two, in, into the seam of the pellet, and they, it popped into two pieces. And so all I had to do was pluck them out, and it came out really easy. If you can get them to split like that, it's helpful, um, but it's not always going to happen. Um, I haven't had much difficulty getting things out other than just being patient with it and slowly you know picking at it with the needle until i'm able to pry it out of that cup so let me do that um and i'll i'll get back to you in a moment and and we'll talk about the next step after that so honestly that just took me a couple of seconds uh as you can see i've got my needle and there's a little bit of sack that was still stuck on stuck onto that ball uh that little pellet uh, I used a pair of pliers to jam the needle down into that ball in the cup here. So it was like this, and I was jamming the needle into it. And then I just, using the pliers again, I just plucked it out. And so there's that that ball. Come on, focus, focus, focus. It doesn't There we go. And you can see the ball has a seam in it, for, but I, I tried to get the needle into that seam, but I, it, you know, it, it just wasn't cooperating. But it came out well enough, uh, easily enough. It just popped right out of the cup. So uh, now what I would normally do is use the other end of the needle and then go in there and clean this out. Make sure there's no debris left in there. Uh, maybe flush it with a little bit of water. Um, this one looks awfully clean, so I'm not too worried about it. So anyway, that's how you pop the little balls out. At least that's how I've done it. Um, I, I I don't know of any other way to do it. This is kind of how I, I how I personally figured out to do it. So the next step uh, is the diaphragm and getting the diaphragm installed. So the first thing you have to do is you have to cut the diaphragm to size. Now... <clears throat> I, uh, I've been using a lot of the information from pen tooling, but I've seen the same information uh, elsewhere. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I had a frog in my throat. So you need to cut the diaphragm down to one and one sixteenth of an inch. And so I do it on this uh, stainless steel ruler. I line it up, the end of the ball in the diaphragm right at the, at the, the first mark. And then I go up here to one and one sixteenth, which is right there. And then I use a sharp knife and I trim it. So the diaphragm is now one and one sixteenth inches long. And this is where another specialized tool comes in. I suppose you could do it other ways, but this tool is very hel helpful. Uh, it's from Pen Tooling. It doesn't cost very much. Um, it's Pen Tool number D15. D as in dog 15. Um, I had an old silicone sack that um, I don't remember why I cut it down this much. But anyway, um, so I've got a little bit of tubing on here so it's easier for me to grip it. It's just a piece of aluminum that's been machined to the proper size for this, this uh, operation. So you use the blunt end here and then you slide the diaphragm up on it. And this is just to help you do the first step. And the first step is to cover it with talc. Now, baby powder is not made out of talc anymore. Baby powder is made out of corn starch or corn. Yeah, I think it's corn starch. Um, you don't want to use that. You want to use pure, true tal talcum powder. Um, this is a little um, container that is sold by Anderson Pens. Pen tooling also has it in a little dispenser bottle. I like to get a lot on there because I tend to knock it all off while I'm doing the the, the process here. Basically, the talcum keeps the diaphragm from sticking to itself, which is a bad thing because you want to be able, you want the the diaphragm to to move up and down upon itself uh, without def without adhering and becoming you know useless. Anyway, so you you coat it with talc and then you roll it back upon itself, while making sure that it stays down as far as you can there. And, and you roll it down a little bit past um, the end there where it's almost up onto where the pellet is. And then I like to wipe the talc off my hand there and then slide it off of the blunt end here. 
Come on. Get off of there. It's it's kind of stuck. It wants to stay. It doesn't want to leave its home. There we go. Now, then you take the other end with the little cup on the end there. And that little cup will reach up in there and grab the, the pellet. And you want to kind of extend it a little bit so that you've got the, the end of the sack is a little bit uh, stretched around the ball. Get your filler unit, set it in there, and pop it in. And you'll feel it pop in and then let go. And then you can continue rolling. Well, if it wants to cooperate, continue rolling it up on itself, up over the the flange here, up until it reaches reaches that um, well that 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 one flange right there. Um, so there's a taper to that aluminum piece. And then you want this to jiggle it just kind of butt up against that ridge right there. And then I like to push it out so that the diaphragm is operating properly. And it's in the right orientation for when it goes up inside the barrel. Now, you'll really want to make sure that the barrel is very, very clean when you do this. Um, as clean as you possibly can. Um, like I said, if there's any kind of debris or anything in there... Uh, you can see, you know, if it'll let you, let me focus how clean this barrel is. I, I have a, this is a, a pen from 1947, and I have a, a suspicion that um, it was serviced at least once um, in its lifetime uh, to, for a new diaphragm. Either that it was used a little bit and then put in a box and never touched again. Um, anyway, so there, none of none of the diaphragm adhered to the barrel. Uh, none of there was there's no debris, no shack, uh, shellac debris or anything like that in there. So this should be a fairly straightforward um, reinstall process. Now, if you just shove this up in there and then and then twist it in, what's going to happen is is as you tighten it down, the the diaphragm can be, begin to twist in there. And if it does that, it will it'll grab the sides of the barrel and it'll, it'll make it so that it just won't enter properly and it won't function properly from then out. You don't want this to have any twists in it when it's up in place inside the pen. If it does, then it's just not going to work right and it will not live very long. It, those twists will cause stress places where the, the diaphragm will tear. So to prevent that, we use a little bit of silicone. Uh, this is super slick silicone oil. There may be other specific products out there that will make this possible. Um, but this is the one that comes from pen tooling, and it's worked for me. Um, you don't need a lot. You just need to put a bead of it around this widest portion up here so that as it's up inside the barrel, it won't it, it will allow it to slip around the barrel instead of being um, uh, instead of grabbing it and twisting it. And now, some people will say you need to put some you know some new shellac on this filler mechanism here. I don't. Um, I, I have a feeling that I, I may want to be able to take these pens apart again in my lifetime. And I have found that, that silicone will allow it to uh, to seal up well enough. I mean, it's not like it really has to seal uh, this uh, it, because the seal is actually the diaphragm. Um, anyway... So this is that, but this is how I do things. And, uh, you know, like I said, this is the way I do it. You may have different opinions or whatever. So it kind of has to pop past. There's a there's kind of a ridge in there. You have to get it to pop past. Gently push it past it, and then it goes up inside, and you can feel it kind of get some resistance there. And now you start screwing in this last bottom unit here. And you want this to turn in without twisting the 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 knob here or the rod, whatever you want to call that. And you're only going to be able to twist it in so far with your fingers when you're going to have to get the the tool again. And I just use it to help me finish putting it in the rest of the way. Screw it back in there, tighten it down, and then twist it in. And this one's going in very smoothly because, like I said, there was very little debris in there. It was very clean. And you can feel it. It has an interesting feeling once it starts to kind of crush the the the, the latex of the of the diaphragm. Once it start once it's done that and it feels snug, I stop. And also that uh, it will go back in about as deep as it was when you before you took it apart. So yeah, it's in there. And 
um, using a flashlight. I look down inside the barrel, make sure that there are no twists in the diaphragm. It looks nice and straight in there. I don't know if you can see that down in there. You can see the diaphragm, you can see the pellet down in the bottom there, a little white pellet. So it went in just fine. It's nice and straight, no twists in it. And when you operate the, the pellet up and down, it works it with it does it without any catching on anything. It's nice and smooth. Um, and I'll try and do this without blinding you this time. Uh, you can see inside there now there's clarity in the barrel. Some it's mostly ambered, but um, you can see how the diaphragm works. It moves up and down inside the barrel there. And what that does is it displaces air and then allows ink to be drawn back up into the pen. Um, and that comes up through this uh, kind of suck tube that goes uh, through the sac uh, through the the feed. Now, <laughs> if you wanted to completely tear this pen apart, you would need a knockout block and a, you know and, and knock the the feed out and the and the and the nib and everything. I, I don't recommend doing that unless you have a good reason to do it because you can damage all of this. Um, and sometimes just a good soak in some good uh, uh, pen cleaner or even just, you know, cool water with some soap in it should be enough to clear it out. Um, I left this one soaking overnight. Um, <clears throat> I scrubbed it a couple of times with, with a soft brush like this one just by going like this to make sure that I got all the, the stuff on the outside off let it soak it this was pitch black and it came out fairly clear um and after a while the water stopped uh, getting any ink in it and so it's it's fairly clean um again i will put some silicone here around the 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 threads here instead of some shellac because i don't really want to glue it back together i think um i and future users might be better served with being able to open this pen up in the future um, back then, they were concerned about making sure it didn't leak, and the silicone was to keep it from leaking. Now, because there's shellac, there's old shellac in there, it's still going to grab pretty tight. So um, I'm going to need my two grippers here to get it all the way in. And there it is. I think it's seated all the way. Yes, it is. Uh, nope, just a little bit more. And that old shellac is a pain in the butt. Okay. So it's all the way in there. I did try to scrape off as much of that shellac as I could. Uh, normally shellac can be cleaned off with alcohol, but alcohol will completely destroy celluloid. So you don't ever want to use it. Even though alcohol is the thinner for shellac, you can't use it on these pens. Um, not unless you hate the pen and you want to just throw it away. So there we are. We have a cleaned section and a new diaphragm in this really pretty cool old Parker pen. Um, I, this is like my fourth or fifth one so far. Um, I'm Again, I'm no expert. Do this at the, your own risk, but the parts and the tools are available. Um, look at Anderson pens, look at pen tooling, and um, have fun. Pens are made to be used and uh, have fun with. So until next time, bye.